From all walks of life, people can tell their tale of today's economic crisis. But those who live under the University of California system face something of a unique situation in that UC's billion dollar budget deficit caused quite a pinch at a place where people already struggle to make ends meet. In response to the budget deficit, the UC declared a fiscal emergency, instilling a furlough program that cut employees' pay between 4 and 10 percent. Employees also faced increased contribution for benefits and pension cuts. Faculty were laid off and classes cut. Students now pay more for less of an education. One of the things that we heard university leaders moaning about over the past year is the state cut our budget by 20 percent and therefore we've had to cancel a lot of classes, fire a lot of non-tenured faculty, cut down on the hiring of graduate students, and close off classes to students. I said, why? The amount of money they're taking in from student fees each year now is just as much as the amount of money they get from the state. So what are they doing with the student fee money? Turns out you can't find out. They just throw it into a pot, stir it all up, and spend it who knows how. Charlie Schwartz is a physics professor at UC Berkeley. In his 50 years with the university, he's seen some changes, though none as monumental as recent measures to combat the fiscal crisis. At the present day, students throughout UC are paying more than 100% of what it costs the university to provide their education. The university's stand in line is students are paying 30 or 40% of the cost of education. So this is a place where I say the university is perpetrating something of a fraud. It's an accounting dishonesty. I know it's not unique to this university. It's done by research universities all across the country. I know it's an old, old habit of hiding the cost of research under the cost of instruction, but uh, no longer tolerable because it has consequences. Students and their families are being forced to pay too much for what they're getting, and that means many of them will not be able to come. So this fundamental mission of a public university, which is to provide first-class education to all qualified students, regardless of whether they come from rich families or not, is in great jeopardy right now. And one of the interesting questions is, Who's actually handling the money? Where's the money going? What are the priorities? Why are they closing classes and firing teachers? Makes no sense. Clearly they're doing something else with the money. What? You can't find out. That's not accountability. That's not transparency. That's bad management. The budget is controlled by a governing board of 26 regents, by and large business people and political figures. Appointed by the governor for 12-year terms, regents oversee university policy, the budget, and a 30 to $40 billion pension fund. 20 years ago, the pension fund was successfully run in-house. It was so successful, the university and its employees went on contribution holiday. 10 years ago, regents made the decision to outsource the fund. The return plummeted. Today, unless Regents return funding to its full level, pensions will quickly be in serious jeopardy. And so there's a recent uh, letter I saw from the President's office in which he stated how wonderful the pension fund has been run, why we don't need any amateur's advice. And when I looked at that statement and got some data, I found that he was basically lying. What President Yudof did in looking at the last 20 years, he averaged the results of the last 10 years with the results of the previous 20 years. So I just looked up the data to separate them. The first 10 years, the average return was around 15%. For the second 10 years, the average return turns out to be around 3%. So if you average 15 and 3, 9. And that's what Yudof claims. But when you take them apart, you see, hey, we were doing great way back then. We've been doing pretty lousy. So this is an example of how people in responsible positions serving the whims of our Board of Regents can produce very lousy arithmetic. You can question the wisdom of that at the time they were flush. 
Um, those days are done. We are looking down the barrel on, on the trend lines of significant GM style deficits in terms of what we are obligated and what we owe retirees of today, tomorrow, and generations down the line and what we, we're gonna have to pay them. Prior to the pension holiday, contributions were around 20%. UC gave 16%, employees between two to three. A task force appointed by President Yudof recommends reinstating a 20% contribution. However, the numbers show yet another battery on low wage workers, cutting benefits and requiring higher contributions to their pension for less of a return, while high wage workers will see an increase in retirement income. Some of these regions uh, have a conflict of interest. They own companies that benefit from these kinds of risky investments, and that is the problem that's going on right now. And it's all to the doing of UC and the regions. They should know how we are affected individually and how we need, what we need to do to survive and to uh, cope with uh, you know, the lack of money in the house. It's a, an everyday struggle. Every month, I see my bank accounts and there's nothing. Okay, don't. so we cut and we cut and we cut. I'm in the middle of losing my house. I don't know if I will keep my house. I leave check, check by check and it's, it's not enough. I wish we could have a voice and, and they can hear us, how we're doing, you know, and how this is affecting all families. And I miss my kids desperately. They, they don't see me a lot. They, they didn't see me a lot growing up as I was working two jobs to make my ends meet here at the university. And, and I'm still doing it. Over the years, we've fought for raises. We've fought for uh, extra help. You know, they keep raising the ages to everything, and uh, money is disappearing at the speed of light. And now, all of a sudden, they send that they want us to put money into the pension system. So I don't understand how that's possible. I upheld my end of the bargain. I came to work every day. I did what I was supposed to do. And I just want the promises that I was promised to be upheld also. No nos podemos mantener con un solo trabajo. Pues yo sé que nos tenemos que cuidar, pero uh, le doy gracias a Dios que todavía estoy joven para poder trabajar dos trabajos. Me siento mal por, los, por algunos compañeros que ya están grandes de edad y no se pueden jubilar y tienen que estar trabajando muy duramente en los trastes, donde sea, porque también la pensión a veces que les dan no les alcanza para una renta. María Romero is a single mother raising three children. Her husband passed away, leaving her to support their family. For the past 14 years, María has worked two jobs Recently, she had surgery, taking a week and a half to heal. Most of that unpaid. ¿Qué va a ser de mis hijos? No quiero que ellos paren de estudiar. Que es lo único que es lo único que yo les puedo dar, porque tengo que pagar la renta, tengo que salir adelante. Maria's day begins at 5 a.m. Her children, still sleeping, will be sleeping again when she returns home at midnight. I wish I could have a good job so that she would spend more time with my sisters, tell them about life, how, how a woman should take care of her, herself when you're growing up. Because you know, for a man, it's different. Y si quisiera, yo creo que lo más triste aquí en este país es que uno tenga que trabajar duro y dejar a sus hijos. Porque ese tiempo ya no regresa. Los hijos crecen muy rápido aquí. Y si no está uno, hay veces que yo no los veo por por dos días. And she's the best mom. She's she's our mom and our dad. Yeah. And not everyone can do that. <laughs> While Maria and many other families struggle to make ends meet. President Yudof recently moved from his lavish UC paid rental home in the Oakland Hills to a new rental in Lafayette, citing cost savings to the university. 
However, an August 21st New York Times story detailed exorbitant UC paid expenses related to his housing. While he hunted for a new home, his stay at the Claremont Spa and Resort cost $8,400. Movers cost $39,000, $127,000 for home security, $19,000 for elevator repairs, and now a dispute with his former landlord over the $32,000 security deposit stemming from $45,000 in damages. These expenses have outraged UC faculty, students, and staff alike. This and other money mismanagements cause concern that top-tier executives don't understand. I doubt we did everything perfectly. I don't think that's in the course of human events. But I do know this. I do know that from President Udoff and the regents down, they kept their eye on the prize. And the eye on the prize was to get this university through rough waters intact. UC is one of the premier learning institution, teaching institution, medical institution, not only in the state of California, but in the entire world. You have executives that are making 200, 300, and in the case of the president, over a million dollars a year. He makes more than the president of the United States. Well, there, you know, there are industry standards to measure that in terms of how much above your average pay uh, someone like a chancellor running a, a university is, and we're, we're well below that. And you say that the salaries are exorbitant. I don't think so. Every survey shows that they're 15 or 20 percent below market. If a university president making close to a million dollars a year is under market, and service sector salaries that barely pay the rent are above market, maybe the market is wrong. Again, this is a business person's attitude. The top executives naturally deserve the biggest pay because they're, well, maybe in private business they're responsible for the success or failure of an enterprise, but that's not a university at all. The basic decisions are what to teach and how to teach it, what to research and how to research it. Those decisions aren't made by presidents or chancellors or deans, certainly not by regents. They're made by the faculty in their own collective um, and peer watchful ways. They've been kind of operating in an ivory tower, almost like an exclusive club. They're not accountable to anybody at all. Uh, they uh, continue to operate in secrecy. Uh, there's a lack of transparency. It's not done in the dark. I, I would defy you to find a more transparent public institution than this one. But the UC's transparency is questionable. Our request for region interviews was denied. Our cameras were turned away from a public regents meeting. And at UCLA, we were shut down by campus officials. People are hung up on UC. They should be hung up on California. And if you're really interested in getting California through this coming transformation, then you're doing everything in your effort, whether you're a Sacramento lawmaker or a citizen, whatever, you're doing everything in your effort to keep this place not just survival mode, but thriving. Perhaps people are hung up on seeing their family through. Because what is California without its people? As financial struggles take precedence over family, kids grow up without parents. As students can no longer afford an education, a public system becomes privatized. The story behind the University of California's fiscal emergency tells more than the crisis at hand. It tells a story of crisis on the horizon. <laughs>